Hi there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I figured we would dive into using a combo box to retrieve, find, retrieve, uh, and bring up a record for our user. So basically, using a combo box to perform searches on forms. Now, typically we're going to do this in the header section. It's just a logical place to put such tools. And today I'm going to explore a couple different ways that we can empower combo boxes. So we can do some simple things and we can do more advanced programming functionality and it all depends on your needs. As you're going to see here on the screen currently, I do have my article on the subject. You can scroll through it and look at the different things that we're going to discuss today. So the code is all there and available for you to look at and copy paste if you want. And um, then we talk a little bit about practices. What I'm showing you today is always for educational purposes. When you go and put this in place, there are probably extra steps that need to be taken, such as proper error handling, such as reducing, you know, select star to select and then putting just the specific fields you need. The, the end of the discussion is always the same, and it's the same with almost all code, is which is the best. Well, that all depends on your situation. So I cannot pronounce myself and say, oh, this is the approach you need to use, because it will depend on your database, what it's being used for, who's using the database, and that dictates to a certain extent which of these approaches you want to use. So as a developer, you need to simply try them out for yourself and decide which one will best suit your users, best suit your use case. Um, I do have a, the demo database connected to the article, so you can download a free copy. It's completely unlocked. There's no strings attached whatsoever. You have access to all the codes, and you know there's nothing going on behind the scenes that shouldn't be, and you're able to, because you have the code, examine and see exactly how each uh, demo form has been put together and how they work so you can learn. So basically, we're going to just dive into the realm of how we can use combo boxes to perform searches and retrieve records. I guess one of the simplest approaches is simply using the filter property. Now, we're going to use it through VBA, but nonetheless, if you didn't, weren't already aware, when you design a form and you attach your record source and all of that, on the data tab, if you go down, you have this filter and you can apply a filter to restrict which records are returned on the form by default. Now, in our context, we don't want to change the default behavior. We want the form to load with all the records and allow the user to make their selection and filter based on that. So that's why I'm not using this property right off the bat. So let's just open the form. We're going to look at the way it works and then we'll go look at the code behind it. So the, all the forms and all the examples are basically always the same scenario. It's okay. So basically I have a form it's connected to a contacts table. It doesn't make a difference what the table is. These techniques work with any table. What I've done here is I've created two search combo boxes, one, which is unique. So yes, here you're seeing names, but what it's really connected to, it's a hidden column is the primary key column. So it would be the contact ID field that it's actually going to be returning. This combo box will return the unique number in this case, even though we don't see it. So if I select that, it will bring me up that specific record. So I said John Doe, I see John Doe. You'll also notice with the filter approach that we now are connected to just a single entry. Okay. Let's close it down. We should look at that initial status first. We have one of four records, and that's going to be the same for all the scenarios. We have four records in the table. If I apply this unique search, it filters it down to just the one. If I do a non-unique search, so instead of searching for a specific individual, I say, let's say I'm going to search by last name, and I know there's more than one Smith, so I'm going to pick Smith. In that case, you'll see now we're filtered one of two, and we can use the navigation buttons, or you can create your own, to cycle through the different records. Because it's filtered, don't forget you can also remove the filter if you want. That's why you can use the button down on the bottom of your form. You could also create your own button to remove the filter applied to the form.
But that's as complicated and as simple as it is. Um, the non-unique will return however many matches there are. So in the case of Candy, there's only one. In the case of Smith, there's several. So you're going to have access to several records. If you do something that's binding to a unique, then you only get that one. And with the filter, the benefit to a certain extent, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, the user can also, you know, remove the filter. So how is this all done? Well, it's all very simple. Go into design view. Everything is controlled by the after update event of each combo box independently because they're doing two different things. Well, sort of. Um, they're, they have different data sources for sure. Um, if you look here, um, the Roche source here, if you just want to take a peek, I simply took all the contacts, grabbed their last names, did a distinct and removed any nulls. When you look at this one instead, however, I created the full no name, which is what we see on the form. And, but there's a column ahead of that, which is the contact ID. And if you look at the formatting, the first column is actually zero. And the second one takes up the full width. So that's why you don't see the contact ID. If we look at the event, the event is very simple. What am I doing? Because I have two combo boxes, I'm going to start off by clearing the other search box. Because if the user has come in and now said I'm searching by last name, well then whatever previous searches have been applied are no longer apply. So I'm going to clear out any existing searches in the other search combo boxes. Then I'm going to remove any existing filter. I'm going to set the filter on to false. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to check. Does my search combo box have a value? Is it null? If it isn't null, then we are ready to apply a filter. It means the user made a selection. So I'm going to come here, me filter, and I have to define my filter. So my filter in my case is the field name I'm searching on. So the primary key contact ID, and it equals whatever the value is that my user selected in that combo box. So that's what I do. Once it's been properly defined, now I apply the filter, me filter on true. That's it. So that's filtering based on the contact ID. Similarly, in this case, it's still applying a filter. It's just on a different field, which has duplicate entries, but you're going to see the approach is identical. There is no difference. The only change now here is we're filtering on a different field. And because this is a string, a text field, don't forget we have to use single quotes to encompass, surround, whatever the selection made by the user was, okay? Compared to the other version where it's a numeric value, we don't need the single quotes around it, okay? And if you didn't know with dates, right, you use the pound sign. And that's it. That's, that's the entire everything you need to know about using a filter property. It's very simple. You remove any existing filters, you define your filter, you apply your filter. It's always the same. Always, always, always. And that's also why, like I said, if you didn't want the user, let's say, uh, let's open this guy back up in form view. If you didn't want the user having to come down here to remove a filter, if you wanted to create your own remove filter button, all you'd have to do is create a button that calls this, right? Me filter on and make it equal to false. And that removes the filter. Very simple. Well, very simple once you know how. Everything's simple once you know how. The next approach, um, this is one I used for years myself, um, was using the find first with bookmark. Uh, let's, let's look at it in function. You're going to see right off the bat, the form loads, we have access to all our records, one of four records. So let's do the filter based on unique values once again. And as you see, it brings me to that record, but it doesn't filter. It isn't restricting me. I still have access to the other records. I can still move off of that record if that's what I want to do. Similarly, <clears throat> if we go to the search for last name, let's go to Smith. I know there's multiple Smiths. It will bring me to the first occurrence. 
And you don't necessarily control what is the first occurrence because that's going to depend on your uh, record source, your order by, things like that. So it's, it's a dangerous, possibly a dangerous approach. It depends on what you're doing, what your form is. But beware, you don't necessarily control what the find first is going to land on. Not something I'd use reliably, at least. But this technique, find first, also enables you to use other commands. And I have them here in the explanation. For instance, find next, find previous, find last. So you can therefore create a button like I did here. And we're on the first smith. Well, I can press the find next and it will bring me to the next smith. Okay. So just to show you, you do have capabilities, but you don't necessarily know which one, which order they're going to be unless you take certain steps to ensure that. Um, and I don't think it's something that you can 100% guarantee. So if the order is very critical to you, maybe this, you need to think long and hard about this. Find first just goes to the first record that it finds in the record set. And that depends on your SQL and other factors. But as you can see, the difference here, however, is even after it performs the find first, it doesn't restrict, doesn't filter down what is displayed. You always have access to your complete record set. Uh, let's look at the code. Very simple. What are we doing? Well, once again, I clear any existing records. Um, in this case, because I didn't want to have to uh, keep defining the record set, uh, I made it a, a form level variable. In the case that you don't want to do that, uh, you could declare it in here. Okay. And you can declare your, your record set here and you could clear it at the end of your routine. And that's why I left those commented lines there for you to see if you're just doing a one-off, you don't need to make it a module level variable. Um, as you can see here, so I clear any existing other filters, that's fine. I check that there actually is a value to, that we're going to be able to use to filter. And if there is a value, then I declare that my record set is the record set clone. Okay, so we're making, taking a copy of the record set that we can then perform our find first. And the find first is the same as any other search. It's the field equals the combo box value. And then that we're going to use the bookmark of that record set that is found. And we're going to use that bookmark to set the forms bookmark to that record. So we're going to navigate to what it found. If we look at the second instance, it's the exact same thing. There is no difference. It's the same code. However, now we're searching on the last name and we're using the single quotes because it's string value again where things become a little bit more interesting is the command button now we're able to come and check and we can use the find next you see find next and it's the same syntax you still have to apply the filter which i always found a little odd but you you do a find next and last name and then you do the bookmark again and you could do the same if you wanted to add a find previous button or a find last button or a find first button. So it's always going to be the same thing. You just apply these two lines of code. And that's the simplicity and complexity of using all of those commands. Find first, find last, find previous, find next. It's always the same general idea. You build your filter and then you use the bookmark of the result to bookmark your actual form. The record source approach. Well, as you can see here, I've got two, two copies that just illustrate two slightly different aspects of it. So let's look at the first. We open the first one and you can see we're displayed one of four records. So we have all of our records. If we look at the second example, you're brought up on a new record. So you don't have access to your old entries. What is the difference between the two of these? Well, this all has to do with your record source. So let's look at example two, which we don't have access to our records. If we come and we look at the SQL view for a moment, our where, this is what we really want to see here, our where. 
our where is our contact ID equals, and now we're going and getting the combo box on the form. So forms, form contact register sex 02, and then combo box search name. Now let's contrast that to the record set that we will find in the uh, first example. If we come and look here, look at the where clause is longer. So we have that first part, which is identical to form two, but we also added an or where we're saying or form, same form contact zero one, the search combo box is null. So by adding this or is null, that will actually return all the records in the instance that no search parameter has been entered yet. So it all depends on how you want your user experience to be. Do you want users to have access to previous records or not? Sometimes you don't want them. If they perform a search, then bring up a record. Until that point, don't show anything. It really is a personal choice and up to you. As for the search itself, both examples use the exact same code. And you're gonna see, it's very simple. It's just we requery. We simply requery the form. And if we go and check the second, it's the exact same thing. We requery. All we're doing is the record source. We're reapplying it now that we've changed the actual criteria, the combo box. So we're telling the form, hey, hey, the combo box has changed. Please reflect that change in your record source that you're sending the form. And if we close this down, you'll see they both work equally well. It's just a question of at the initial load, do you want to show records? Yes or no. And you pick a record, it brings you to that record. But you never have access with this approach here to the previous records. You can't navigate back and forth. Okay. So you're restricted down to the single record that you've selected. And if you look at the second one, the second one opens up in here, you don't even see those other records. And once you apply it, you're brought to the specific record you chose. Now, obviously we could add code to this one because, because you know, let's play it again, because this one here does initially show us all the records. Then we filter. We could add a clear button here to restore our ability to see all of the records. If that was something that was of interest to us. Okay. You can also see, uh, just clearing out the combo box restores our ability, but that isn't the case here. Remember, because we never had that ability to see the other records. So clearing here will not give us access to the other four records because we never had that ability. So. Probably here would be a great idea to put a little clear button that just clears this, sets the combo box to null, just to facilitate things for your users. And then they'd have access to filter or not filter however they want. You'll also notice here when we apply the filter, right? It doesn't apply a filter because it's not a filter property. We're changing the record source, not, not applying a filter. The last approach. Uh, is to dynamically change the record source. So let's take a look. Basically, these two are similar to these two. One filters, one doesn't. So here you have one of one, but if you come to this guy, you have one of four. It will eventually load. There you go, one of, one of four, okay? We can briefly look at how that is done if you wish. Okay. If we come here, what do we have? What I've done here, it's probably easier in SQL view, as I've done a select star from contacts and I put where one equals zero. Microsoft adds all sorts of parentheses, but initially what it was, was one equals zero period. So because one doesn't equal zero, it connects, we have access to the fields, but it doesn't actually bring up a record versus here, if you look at this one, I don't have a criteria. It's simply select star of contacts. Okay. So that's why this one has access to all the records. The actual approach in both is the same. So let's look at the first one. So the first one, like I said, because one 
never equals zero. It doesn't access any records, so there's nothing displayed. We're brought up on a new record. We filter now, and it brings us to that one of one record. So we never have access to the other ones. We can once again come here, do Smith if we wanted to. Now you're brought up one of two. So you only have access to the Smiths, and you can navigate through them if you so choose. Okay. How is this done? Very simply, let's look at the first case. Go into the after update, always the after update with combo boxes. We clear any existing uh, filters, searches, and we redefine the record source for the form. So now we're saying select contacts, but now we're saying where the contact ID equals the contact ID of the combo box. And we requery the form to reflect that change in record source. So we're in runtime changing the record source. So what the form actually binds to the data that it has access to. And because it's based on a primary key, it will always be bound to a single record. If we compare that to the search by last name, go to the after update. And here, once again, we clear any other searches and it's the same thing. However, because this is a non unique, it can return zero or multiple records. It all depends on how many matches are found, but it's the same thing. We're redefining the record source and then requerying the form to update and display based on the new record source. Uh, that's literally the complexity of the matter. If you wanted to find next match, this isn't like the find first where we have to use find next, find previous, find last. We've redefined the record source and we find ourselves on a record. All we have to do is go to the next record. So you, there's different ways you can use run command, go to next. You can use do command, go to record AC next. And just for demonstration purposes here, I also included, because if you wanted to, you can just keep clicking that button. And if you click, keep clicking the button, you're going to go to a new entry. And if you keep clicking it, then you get an error. So I just wanted to demonstrate here for people's knowledge. If you wanted to stop that behavior, you could, for instance, just check, have I navigated to a new record? So I was on the last one. I clicked again. So I navigated a new record. Well, in this case, I'll say then go back one. Um, there's different ways you could use error handling. You can trap any errors, things like that. Um, but just to, for demonstration purposes here, uh, you could also say, okay, when I get to the last, you could say, if I'm on a new record, we could say go to first and you could make it basically a cycle, which just keeps looping. Lots of things you can do with code. It all depends on what type of user experience you want to give your users, you know, what type of behaviors you think will benefit them in their work. And let's close that. You're going to see here. The entire change here, like I said, was in the initial load, but the coding is the same. Okay. And the go to next, I did the exact same thing. So there's no difference between the two samples beyond that initial load. One loads nothing and one loads everything. All right. So one of one versus one of four, which will eventually load. Um, and there you have it. Now you know at least four different approaches and you could even say six because there's different ways of the, controlling the initial load, but you now know how you can use combo boxes confidently to retrieve records from any table query and display them on your form in real time and give users certain functionalities or restrict them because sometimes it's also a good idea to restrict them. Sometimes you don't want them being able to navigate through all the records. You want them to have to pull up a specific record. I know for a fact that opening forms like this on an existing record has caused many problems for many people because a lot of novice users don't realize that it loaded a record and that they start typing and they overwrite existing entries. So in many instances, opening the form like this would be preferable. At least that protects your data. No one's going to overwrite anything. There is the downside here that people can start typing and they can start creating records when they didn't necessarily intend to. Um, and 
that can also be where my uh, one of my previous articles about creating a save button could possibly be of interest. It, it all comes down to who is using the database, how knowledgeable they are, how much training did they get. Um, but just different approaches, different scenarios. It depends on you, depends on your users. And now you have lots and lots of options. Uh, if you look at the database at all, um, as you can see here, I tried to put a little bit of an explanation as to what exactly each form, how it's sort of put together. Now, obviously they're very simple, but I, I'm just trying to explain a little bit. You know, this form is bound to the contacts table or Aquaria upon opening displays all the records. Yep. We have one of four, so we have access to all the records. Once the user makes a selection of the combo box, a filter is applied, which will restrict the records to just those that match, which we, we have already seen that. It restricts it down to just the match. If you filter on a PK, it limits it to a single match, obviously. If you filter on something that is not unique, so we do the Smith, then it's restricted to the corresponding number of records that match the criteria Then your user will be able to navigate between them. So yes, they can navigate between them using the standard navigation buttons or your own. So I tried to put a little bit of an explanation. You also have the video now and you can dissect the code for yourself to better understand exactly what I have done. But in all instances, it doesn't make a difference of which approach you're always going to be looking at either the after update uh, events, the, if you have a command button, the click event and the initial uh, form record source. So those are the three elements that basically are in play in every single example. So it's really not very complicated. Those are the elements you need to look at and dissect and basically replicate into any of your forms. If this is something you want to get into, um, also, if you're going down this route, this can also be stuff that you uh, implement with class modules. So if you're going to be doing a standardized search, you know, you're going to set up some type of standardized search mechanism. Um, it really isn't that hard because it is so simple. We're talking about one or two events. Um, it's not very hard to push that over to a class module and use form subclassing to be able to facilitate deploying it and facilitate maintaining your code in the long run. So one other thing to throw in there, something to think about, um, form subclassing can also be useful in this type of scenario. Anyway, um, we'll stop here. I think you guys get the gist of it. And, um, once again, thank you for spending a couple minutes of your day with me. Always appreciated. Uh, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And, um, if you have any means to promote any of this on your websites, blogs, social media, please feel free to, it greatly aids me and, uh, have a great day, everyone. We will see you in the next one.